If a small percentage of people become like this, just by their way of being, they will change the atmosphere in the world. Will we get to that critical mass in the next ten, fifteen years is the challenge which we are striving for. Namaskaram Sadhguru, I am living in the ashram for around two months. Oh. This place is so conducive for sadhana. I fear that if someday I have to travel outside or go home to meet my family, I will not be able to adjust. Mm. Is that once a person lives in ashram, he or she is unsuitable to live anywhere else? Why don't you see it this way, by living in your home, a place that you call as home, you become unfit to live in ashram. But I managed for two months. So, uh, it's like this. You see coconut trees, you don't see many here, but if you see the next piece of land, our coconut trees are doing well, yielding well, better than… Actually, our farmers producers organization here, which is largely coconut and arachnid farmers, has become among the top five farmers producers organizations in the country. So that means, that means they're yielding very well, the coconuts and the arachnid. It's yielding so well, so let's do one thing, take the same coconut trees and keep them up on the mountain top, it's really nice. It'll be nice to have coconut trees up there. When we climb up and we are very thirsty, having a tender coconut out there will be fantastic. But if you put the coconut trees up there, they will all shrivel up and die. Because uh, different types of life needs different types of ambience, different kinds of soil, different kinds of climate. For a human being to flourish as a human being, if you want to flourish as a… an engineer, Maybe, I wouldn't say that, but maybe, because we are not building as much as we should, so maybe this is not the most conducive place. If you want to thrive as a doctor, maybe this is not a conducive place, not enough sick people. If you want to be a lawyer, if you want to thrive as a lawyer, not a good place because not enough disputes, so you can't thrive as a lawyer. But if you're seeing how this being should thrive, it needs a certain atmosphere. The ashram is designed for that, not for you to thrive as something else. Maybe a city or an industrial place or a, a law court, maybe better for other kinds of thriving. But if you want to thrive as a being, the entire atmosphere has been created for that. But if you want to thrive as an ego, very bad place to live, very bad place, not good. You will shrivel up quicker than a coconut tree on the mountain. So, Different spaces are created for different reasons. First you must decide what is the purpose and direction of your life. After that, where to be will come naturally. Where to be, you want to be an industrial engineer, but you go and sit on the beach, no good. There's nothing to do there, beach is for people who are holidaying, vacationing, just sitting there enjoying the ocean and the sand and whatever. 
that's not a place to go and build an industry. So for that you have to be in one kind of place. But you want to thrive as a being, you are not interested in becoming thrive as a profession, but you want to thrive as a being, then this is the place. That's, that's why this place is created. I wish there were thousands of places like this across the country and in the world, but unfortunately it's not so. Because in the last few centuries, this entire system has been dislocated in many different ways. If you do not know this, if I mention the name Krishna, people will think of butter, flute and girls. But Krishna created over… over a thousand spiritual ashrams in his lifetime in the northern plains. Well, nobody talks about it because according to their interests they speak. All that infrastructure has been raised to ground because of serial invasions that this land saw continuously by very wanton and cruel people who destroy everything that's not like them. If you're not like them, you're dead, that's their policy. It has taken a big beating, but it's time to build it back. As I said, uh, by 2025 we will have infrastructure here for 10,000 people to do sadhana for seven months in a year. The idea is to build enough infrastructure so that there is substantial, spiritually strong, not belonging to this group or that group, but internally stable and settled kind of population. We don't need to do this to all the 7.3 billion people. If a small percentage of people become like this, they don't have to teach anything. Just by their way of being, they will change the atmosphere in the world. Will we… will we get to that critical mass? in the next ten, fifteen years is the challenge which we are striving for. Young people who are uh, not yet conceited or entangled, not yet screwed up or entangled within themselves or outside, you must think through this because as a generation of people we have this possibility that the way science and technology has liberated our lives from survival process. It's coming to a place where people are talking about this, it may sound utopian right now, but it will happen. People are saying in another twenty, twenty-five years, nobody in the planet need to work. So lot of people are worried. They are calling me for all kinds of artificial intelligence conferences and asking, what shall we do? I said, all you few professors will be useless because a stupid gadget will earn ten PhDs in a day. My phone can earn ten PhDs in a day, that much information it has. All the idiots who read a book a few years before you and they think they are super intelligent, all of them will fall because a small gadget will do what a million of them cannot do. So this is good time. People are fearing what will happen to our jobs. I said, you will be on a vacation for life, how wonderful <laughs> Anyway, I don't see professors going to their job with great joy, dancing. How many professors went dancing into their classroom <laughs> in total ecstasy? Now your phone will recite Gita, Vedas, Quran, Bible, whatever the hell you want, with total analysis. Which page do you want? Which subject you want? If you just ask, I want to know about what God said about liberation <laughs> All out. Everything that you know by memory will be meaningless because gadgets will car carry a zillion times more memory than you can carry. This is when… this is when a human being becomes significant. 
This is why we want to create infrastructure to produce human beings, not accumulated memory. This is what dissolving or demolishing your karma means. Instead of being an accumulated memory, you're becoming a being. So this atmosphere is created for that. If you think you have completed your mission, you should not have any problems anywhere. If you are a work in progress, then you should not be living. <laughs> you must finish the job, because a half-baked thing could be trouble, you know. So, it's important that <laughs> they're all afraid that they will lose their jobs. I'm looking at how will I handle <laughs> Because once they don't have their jobs, all of them, initially they will freak and fret and drink, but then they will all come. We need to have both physical infrastructure and human infrastructure because being human will become the most important thing once all these damn things are done by the machines. So you must… you must stay for some more time and finish your job, then you will see wherever you go you are fine. I'm going out in the world more than you. I'm doing fine, whichever part of the world. People ask me, you know, I was… I happened to be in one of those glamour events in Mumbai. So some of the people were worried, how to have Sadhguru in this kind of magazine event, you know, it's too much glamour, the way people are dressed, they're drinking, they're doing this. I said, uh, what makes you think? Uh, that I will be disturbed by the way they are dressed or they are not dressed. <laughs> or what they are drinking or eating, what makes you think it will disturb me in any way? My spirituality is not that fragile, that somebody is eating something, somebody is drinking something, somebody is dressed or not dressed, uh, this is not even a matter for me, it's not even a thing for me. It is… because if your spiritual process is so fragile, then if you look at somebody, it'll collapse. <laughs> uh, then you need to work upon yourself. S carrying something so fragile all the time is going to be stressful. If you're carrying something that is that fragile, suppose uh, your feet are made like a jelly, Wherever you step, it'll go like that, then it's difficult to walk. Then you're unfit to walk around in this world. So being unfit to walk around in this world, don't think it's spirituality. Spiritual means, if you take me to hell, I'm still like this only. <laughs> No, I didn't say your home is hell, but I said, <laughs> you said something. <laughs>